In today's video, I'm going to explain the limitation of promises in a UI architecture. So, what we're going to start with is what do we use a promise for normally? If you imagine any type of framework, React, Angular, or Vue, what normally happens is we build some sort of component tree, okay? So it's to be a parent and a child and a child. And we would want to dial out to some sort of data model. And what we want to do is we want to go and fetch some data. Okay, so we probably go to an API. Okay? Now, if we just imagine for a second the sort of things that we can build in a really complicated UI app, just want to give you a quick example here. So imagine we were building a search screen, so there would be a search box there, and there would be maybe some filters with lots of drop down stuff, little check boxes, okay? Lots of complicated filtration options, maybe a toggle box up here. The sort of thing that we would probably build in a relatively complex business app where we'd have to begin to bring back lots of records. Now, what would normally happen is that we begin building something like this, and we'd maybe start with the search part of that screen, and we would get our component to sort of go out to the API and bring back some data and then maybe turn it into a data model and then turn that back and then bring that back to the component. And in that situation, it works pretty well to use your standard promise, okay? Because the promise allows us to go out with a single transaction and you resolve multiple functions on the way back at a later date because this is obviously asynchronous and um, this is synchronous and so it allows us to go out and pull that data back and you know transform that data if we need be. And then what happens is someone comes along and says okay now I want to build the filters part of this okay and so some an engineer will come along and they will call this you know they will call this the search data model and then the next engineer will come along and say, well, I'm going to build another parent component here, maybe a couple of child components, maybe they're much more complicated in this situation because we've now got this complicated filter list. And they are hit with a problem because really what they want to do is they want to reuse a lot of the code from up here. They want to reuse a lot of the transformation. They want to reuse a lot of the data models. But with the promise architecture, they can't do that because the promise only allows a single cycle back and forth. It only allows one command to be sent and then one string to come back. And these are all contained within closures, so you can't actually get access to the data up there. And so they're left with two, two options. They either clone a lot of this stuff, okay? They will send out the request and then they will bring it back in the same way. But instead of this be calling the search data model, this will now be called the filter search data model. I'm sure a lot of you can already see, because I've been in this situation and can see where this is going, okay? They may go to this, they'll obviously you know, go to many of the same API calls. So you basically, in this situation, what you get is you get the problem of duplication, okay? So this is the first problem you get when you try to scale up a UI architecture, you get the problem of duplication. You think what the second problem is? I'm gonna tell you. So the second problem that you get is that if they don't wanna do a lot of this duplication, in order to make the same API calls but have different, slightly different data models, then what they do is they wire this component, and this is as crazy as it sounds, they will wire that directly into that, or normally what they'll do is actually wire it in at the component layer, which is sort of what React tells us to do. And what that will, they will actually do is they will suck <laughs> this data model down through that architecture, and then they will simply reuse it and apply the filtration over the top, okay? So then we'd use things like props, and, yeah, maybe they're going to use state and stuff like that. And the problem is, is that this now, instead of the duplication problem where you sort of scale down that way, this creates an even worse problem. And this problem is coupling. <laughs> coupling. Because what you've done is you've now coupled all your data models and all your stuff because you want to share it and you've coupled it into the framework. Now, there is actually a relatively simple design pattern which can solve this problem. So let me just get the, uh, yeah, the thing, the white design. The design pattern that solves this problem does away with all this because what it says is, hey, instead of us pushing out these individual promises and having these closures that capture all the information and make it hard to uh, duplicate everything, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build a sort of centralized assignment 
place, a place where we can put some sort of variable or a data model, or data structure, etc. And instead of diving out to the web and then putting these back, we are just going to simply subscribe to this centralized location. We're going to use it, do it using the observer pattern. And what will happen is that as we go out, we use a request out, we will simply say to that request, hey, don't return back to me, return back to the observable backbone, the observable framework in there. And what will happen is because we come along and when we, in, when we start up the framework, we get all our components clipped into this observable, uh, this observable pattern by subscribing, each one subscribing to it, okay? We remove all of these problems of duplication and coupling. Firstly, we remove the coupling because now we don't have to pass information through the framework. And now we also remove the duplication problem because now we have a centralized location. And now we can bring, bring in to build a data model that may start its life as a search data model and then can become a filter search data model. And we can just simply keep mutating that data over the lifetime and keep changing it or we can use an even immutable data model if you want to take a functional or more functional programming approach, doesn't really matter. The point is, is that you, you simply go out and you update the central store, you use the observed pattern for everything to dial into it. When everything dials into it, you remove the duplication, remove the coupling. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you'd like to learn more about the observer pattern and building architectures like this that scale really well and are really easy to test, I'm running a free web training class this week. In it, we're going to be going over three things. Firstly, we're going to be going over eight principles that will help you to build, test and scale applications using approaches and design patterns like the observer pattern. In the second part, I'm going to be teaching you the day-to-day -day holistic UI engineer process that's going to help you write code like this on default automatically all the time as you code. And in the third part, I'm going to be teaching you how you can transition from being a stuck and frustrated UI engineer who ends up getting in a complete pickle with all this stuff to being a happy UI architect engineer, which I know because this is why I teach people how to become this guy, the architect. And if you'd like to join me on this web training, training class, what you do is you click the link on or around this video, you get taken through to another page, you sign up and I'll see you on the other side.